Now stay tuned to the following radio broadcast. You're listening to the Victory Station, AM 1360. We're glad you chose us. Thank you. It's Impact with the Florida Star, the largest, oldest, and most read African-American newspaper in Northeast Florida and South Georgia. And now, here's the host, the publisher of the award-winning Florida Star, Clara McLaughlin. This is OPO. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Impact. We got some great clips from our interview with Kareem Brown, as well as we have some information on Juneteenth right here on Impact impact. This system was worse than ours because when they arrest you, you can state, I've met one guy, that you could be in prison for two years for a one stick of marijuana. Mm. So I helped the international to get computer systems so that when you got arrested, the court knew that you'd been arrested. Right. <laughs> so in Ecuador, they're they don't stand up for <laughs> Now imagine this. Okay, imagine uh, a committee comes together and say, "We don't care what we're going to work and put Corrine Brown back in office." Uh, what would you do? Uh, and listen, right now, I got my head in the lion's mouth. Uh, when I get my head out, I, I can decide. I will probably decide to do it for a little while so I can get my money back. <laughs> well, you know I love transportation. It was really my one of my first loves. And, um, you know, I, because transportation is the engine that put America to work. Mm-hmm. And so for, for every, uh, uh, what is it, billion dollars, it creates 44,000 permanent jobs. And if you don't want people to be on welfare and others, then you get them a job. And part of it is making sure that we get our share of it, uh, 10%, and which is a start. And if we did that, then we can help the businesses. You, un- you understand? So transportation is, is just the engine. And so I've always been on transportation. And I've always been on veterans. The entire time I was in Congress, I was on those two committees. And... You know, people think you want to be elected. It's not glamorous. It's hours of work, going to the committees, developing the relationships. And so I was always able to get whatever I wanted. You know, Bill Clinton said, when we see her coming, we just give her what she wants. <laughs> he wasn't just saying that. Because you, if you, you got to do your homework. You got to know your facts. And you got to know how to wheel and deal across the aisle. I didn't just go to L.A. I was out there for five or six different reasons. One, I went out there. It was 400, 400 units, 100 each, of veterans, homeless. They were living under the bridge units, brand new, been standing up for two years because the state of California, California wouldn't fund it. We built it. They wouldn't fund it. Right. You can find letters that I sent to the governor and got the, the California delegation to make them fund that 400 units. And you would think Brown would even think about it and do it because he used to be big time liberal. Did you hear what I said? Mm-hmm. They didn't fund it. Or was it the time I went out there, they had a big hole in the uh, downtown L.A. for the federal courthouse. And the Democrats and Republicans had gotten together and taken the money. When I went out there, they act like I was the president. Hmm. I got that money back for them. Mm-hmm. In L.A. L.A. That's why she was. You see LA. what I'm saying? Way over in L.A. Yeah. But, but I'm a member of the United States Congress. Right. I right. wasn't the time I went person. out there. Right. Was it the time I went there, out there and helped with the foreclosures? You can talk to Bruce Mark. I went to California. I went to Atlanta. I went to Miami. I went to everywhere that we had a critical problem with people losing their homes. Or was it the time I went out there, uh, I was a keynote speaker for a group. I mean, so every time I went, but I don't have to tell you a transportation issue. I was out there when we had the, um, when they had the earthquake. Mm -hmm. I was in the mayor's office and the building started jumping up and down. He said, Corrine, this is an earthquake. Everybody I was with, like, we're here. They start jumping under the table. I ain't know what to do! 
show. <laughs> but, but, but then I was out there. I went and checked the tracks and everything. Right. And the only building that got damaged during that time was the building I was in, the mm. city hall, which was near Disney. Right. And so then I went to the garment district. And I bought backpacks for the kids. I had two or three people that's going to come and say I gave the backpacks. But the point is, I bought backpacks in the garment district. But what's the, why is it so unusual? You can get unique things. You got cash money. You can negotiate. Mm -hmm. And I say, we have one in L.A. We got one in New York. We got one in Atlanta. And you got a small one in Miami. I am a shopper. Right. I know where to get the deals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everywhere I go, it's work. And I take a little time to do what I want to do. So a lot of us would have never known about Trayvon Martin. And nobody would have. Now, when we look at the, what happened with Dylan Roof uh, and uh, him over in North Carolina killing those people in that church, mm -hmm. he said it was the Trayvon Martin case that sensitized him and made him angry. The Trayvon Martin case that did that. This racist, this rabbit racist that ultimately caused a lot of these statues that have to come around, come down around the country as a result of him doing that. Talk about that. Well, I'll never forget the night because it was during the All-Star Game. Right. And I was listening after I got home. It was the shooting. And if you listen to it, it was like a Friday night and we got into it. You really didn't know what had happened. Right. B because that's the way that the police force put it out. So I just thought it was a Friday night shooting. You know, like the girls was fighting. Mm -hmm. But then when I found out about it. See, that that's not... It, it, and that's the thing about the criminal justice system. You, If you just listen and look, you don't know the real story. Right. And so when I found out about it, I called the mayor who's going to come and testify for me, Mayor Triplin. And I told him uh, I want to meet with him. And I wanted him to uh, arrest Zimmerman. And he told me he couldn't do that. I said, okay. He said, what else could we do? And we had a meeting. Now, let me tell you something. You, uh, we, you, we're recording. Okay, you're recording. Now. I'm not going to say what I think about some of you. But you were the city manager. And so you had, you could have just done that. You could have told the sheriff to do it. You wouldn't. So I told the, sh the mayor, I said, release the tapes. Mm -hmm. Just release the tapes. And when they released the tapes, you found out what happened. Yep. And Tallahassee was asking him not to do it. But he released the tapes, and then that's how the story, how everybody found out about the story. Right. But but when you until you heard them asking him not to get out of his car, right? Telling him, yeah, that's when we you got, found out. We got this. You got you that. You back away. Yeah, that's right. And so that's how it got out. Mm -hmm. Trayvon Martin. So uh, and we had a made, we had rallies after rallies. You know that. Well, one of the rallies, I was on stage with. Um, What's his name? Al Sharpton. All the all the big ones was there, and so the mayor spoke, and the people booed him. Mm. And I was sitting there. I said, Corinne, you can't just sit there. Right. I had to get up. I said, Now I want the mayor to come back. And the mayor said the last thing he wanted to do was to go back. I said, Come back up here. I said, Now I want y'all to give him a hand. I said because. If he had not released those tapes, you would not have known. We have to support people that support us. This is amazing to me. This is amazing. To me. So this is this is one of the reasons why I believe that you get targeted because you're powerful, and you're not quiet, and you know in a system like this, mm -hmm. you know how do you have this person that's powerful, this black woman that's powerful, looking out for these people that are usually get banged on and nobody help them. That's my feeling is some of the reason why you get knocked on the way you do. Not only by conservatives, but some liberals do that as well. You, you to said you. it. You said it. Mm -hmm. When they went after my district. Right. 
Yeah, who who you think did that? Yeah. The legal women voters did yeah, it. I know exactly did, what yeah, happened yeah, with that. Yeah, <laughs> 28 prisons. They didn't mm -hmm. care nothing about right. us having representation. Right. Who represent them now? Not Alex Sink. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but the point is, when you place in a room, you got to know why you in the room. Right. And if you... If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. You're on the menu. The criminal justice system, you're getting to see what a number of people just yep. kind of go through and they and, and nobody can do anything. You know, what, what can you do? And they sit in prison and ultimately something happens and, and sometimes they get out after 30 years and they find out that they never did it. Or you find out that some, some law student somewhere just graduates and then he looks through some, some files and he found out the judge took a juror off that could have hung a jury. This happens all the time. And now this type of stuff happens to you. But you also, somebody that's talked about the criminal justice system in mm -hmm. general. Oh, in general. And I have visited several other prisons. And, I, and uh, <laughs> the thing of it is about, I, I want to see them do training at not just warehousing. And it's the difference right. between whether you go to a camp or whether you go to a prison. And I just met a young lady who uh, really had the same judge I had. And she said that, I said, well, how was it? She said, well, the prosecutors was recommending a lot more. And he didn't give her that. And she had an attorney. And so she, she got, like, there was years, but she got 23 months, half of the time. Mm -hmm. And now she's working and just very... You know, she's a beautician in the community, but she was saying that he, she felt he was fair to her, the judge. Do you know what media received the first Eagle Award by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for being the most factual? The Florida Star. Do you know which media solely addresses issues of concern for African Americans? The Florida Star. Do you know which media carries local, state, national, and international news regarding African Americans? The Florida Star. Do you know the only media that carries a special section for our youth at home? And the schedule for three black television networks. Now you know the Florida Star. Northeast Florida's largest, oldest, and most read African American newspaper. Serving since 1951 in more than 200 locations. The Florida Star. News you can use. News you can trust. The people's choice. Striving to make a difference. Subscribe today. Call 766-8834. That's 766-8834. Pick up the Florida Star in over 200 locations. Or to have it delivered, call 766-8834. The Florida Star. Speaking truth to power. And this young man today, I didn't say anything to him. But when he came and said something to me, then I said, but he had pulled up his pants to come say something. Right. To me. And let me tell you something. When I first started my job fairs, they they uh they used to come any kind of way. In the last ten years, they changed. They they came like they was ready to go to work. Right. They 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 came in corduroys or, or whatever, and their shirts and their pants, and they came like they was ready to go to work. And a lot of them got jobs. Mm hmm. Who else does that? Right. And I did the plate lift, and some of the other members start doing something like that. I feel that being elected has got to be more than raising money. Mm -hmm. It's service. Right. Service. Is it your feeling that um, the criminal justice system just rips up families and friends? So they're getting people that a guy like a son to you and, and other people that oh, really yeah, they love don't you. Care about and you. then they drive a wedge, and now you're sitting in court against each other. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I, I feel that it is very sad. It, it really is. I, I don't, you know, it's hard for me to talk about it. Somebody I talk to every day, now, you know, I, 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 I can't talk to him. Or, or it, it's just amazing to me. Well, let me tell you what happened. I was at the bank, and this black lady came up to me, and she said that, you know, I'm a teacher. And she said, I'm 34 years old. And she said, all my life, you've represented me. Mm. And she said, now nah, I don't have a voice. Right. She said, I don't have a voice. I always known that I had somebody that was going to stand up for me. Yes, now, who's standing up for you? Right. So it's a multiplicity. Mm -hmm. As we sit here today, 
tonight they're going to have a vote on who's going to be the council president. I say you need to have a vote on making sure beforehand that the kids on the north side get summer school. Yeah, yeah you, you go, you're going to vote on who's going to be the count. See how they're going to vote on that. Mm -hmm. it, it, listen, I, the, the, I, they showed me a horrible situation of Jacksonville and Merle Avenue and the people fighting in the streets. You're going to have more of that. It's hot. It's summer. Mm -hmm. If the kid's not doing anything, right, you're going to have fighting, you're going to have shootings and killings and everything else. I have always known if you're not in school, you're not working, you're getting in trouble. Yes. And it needs to be <laughs> Ask me. And so they're telling me that they, they're revamping it and they want quality. I want quality and quantity. Right. You right. want both. Mm -hmm. And if you want to uh, get both, you put more money in the pot. Mm -hmm. You don't cut out the programs on the north side. Right. And so they've cut out the program. So who's talking about this? Who's talking about the issues pertaining to us now? Who's talking about set-asides? Who is talking about inclusion? I have sold my beach house. Mm -hmm. I've got my retirement. I've got to figure out how to come up with additional money. Mm -hmm. it, it costs. But if we pool our resources... Right. We'll have the money we need. If you go and sit in the back of the courtroom, you see the people with money, mm -hmm. the people who don't have money, mm -hmm. people who don't have nobody. They get the, the get the book thrown after them. Mm -hmm. We need to have a, 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 a way that we save our youth. Mm -hmm. It's the new slavery. Right. Prison. Right. Prison. Prison. Why is it that 90% of the people plead guilty even when they're not right. guilty? Money. Right. Because it, it takes a lot of money to fight the system. I win, you win. I win, you win. And, and, and there are some things in our community we need to implement. Uh, one good thing is I didn't go to court by myself. It's P.O. Box 40855, Jacksonville, Florida, 32203. And again, that's P.O. Box 40855. Jacks, Florida, 32203. And again, that's the Corrine Brown Legal Expense Trust. Um, are children coming up to you? Do, do, do children get it? I, Young people? Let me tell you something. I was at Gateway, and uh, I was at Distinction. And it was just like I was mobbed right there. <laughs> but what was really encouraging was the number of young people come up to me and say, can I take a picture with you? And, oh, I saw you on TV. I said, well, that's not always good, but they just saw me on TV. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, a young guy, 14, 15, he said, I would be so honored if you take a picture with me. Mm -hmm. And today, I was at uh, Starbucks, and so this young man, I saw him there earlier, but I didn't say anything to him because his pants was dropped down. Mm -hmm. So, but later he came and wanted to talk with me and talk and take a picture, and he had pulled his pants up. Mm -hmm. And so I said, now, what are you doing? And he said he just graduated. He didn't have a job. He wanted to do welding. And so I gave him some information on who to contact. This lady is heading up the summer program. Mm -hmm. And I said, now she can get you a job. I said, but you got to go to her dress right. Mm -hmm. You know. So I'm still helping kids get in school. I'm still helping kids to get jobs. I mean, I'm still the same person. Right. I, I was that person before I got elected. Elected didn't make me any different. And it's just like w when we just had a talk about summer, it's unacceptable that our kids don't have summer, summer school, summer camps. Mm -hmm. Everybody got to do their part. Now, we ran a three-part series, mm -hmm. talked about the large number of black elected officials mm -hmm. that seems to get investigated. Mm -hmm. Is it your feeling that we were kind of way off and radical with that, no, or no, you, did we you, set the facts straight? No, no you, you were right on point. Mm -hmm. And what you just said about Shaka and me, and the fact that in both cases, a veteran got thrown off. Yes, yeah, so Shaka Fatah is a congressperson right was, now. Was, and he's was in jail. Mm -hmm. In jail right now. Because? Uh, same jury situation happened mm -hmm. where 
uh, they find a jury, juror say something, and then they go on and they take that on to the nth degree and ultimately take them off. Yeah. So they can't hang the jury. Yeah. And that same jury that did, with the chocolate top was a veteran. Yes. Same as yours. Yes, yes. Isn't that something? That's amazing. Fight with facts. Right. Facts with facts. You got a veteran cemetery in Jacksonville, a Corrine Brown initiative. Right. You got a, a hospital in Jacksonville. A Corrine Brown uh, uh, initiative. You got a uh, Philawan Bridge, a hundred million dollar bridge, a hundred million dollar courthouse. The port got money. I mean, it's it's no end to the things that I've done for Jacksonville. Tell us about the um, the China trip. Talk about that. Okay, the China trip. I went to Humpty Dumpty Institute, which is in New York. And they had a trip planned, and they were going to cancel it. So I raised my hand and said, I will do it. I did it in less than three weeks. We, we raised the money for 22, I think, kids to go and three chaperones. 22 kids with the China? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, no, and, and, and 22 kids. And guess what? They sent somebody out to every one of those homes. And then they tried to say, well, is it just for privileged black kids? Uh, 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 Dr. Lazar would say, I don't know none. Right. He said, check and see how many black kids. In the a whole world. No, no. Privileged. Try, no, no. Trying to get visas to go right. to China. Right. Yeah. yeah, I paid, I had to pay for everything on this side. Mm -hmm. So I had to pay for the airline, their insurance. The parents had to make sure they had the passports. I paid for the visas. And when they got to China, everything was free. That was the scholarships. They went to um, three cities. They stayed at the university. And they rode the high-speed train in China. Mm -hmm. Something I've never read. And they went to three different cities. Something I've never done. Absolutely. I was just talking to a young lady at uh, Austin's a few minutes ago. And I, I can give you her card. She says that when she, her mother was at Ed Waters, her and her sister, I taught her mother. I let her mother bring her to, to my class at, at Waters. She said that she, her and her sister, her, her mother was taking class. And I said, just because you got children don't mean that you they can't better yourself. Her mother now is a social worker. She is a nurse, and so is her sister. Wow. But, but so you can't even begin to say, I helped Ed Waters get their first accreditation. Dr. Lazaro gave him $500,000 because of me for scholarships. Talk about uh, Orlando, some of the things that you know in Orlando. Oh, it's too much to talk about. <laughs> yeah. but, but wait a minute, a, a thing they that you all go, yeah, the thing that you're missing is every year that I was elected for 23 years, we had a job fair that over 10,000 people came every year. Every year. Every year. Who does that? Right. Not another member in Congress. I've been to him. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ten, but you, you tend to forget. It's a lot of work doing these things. Right. They pay their student fees mm -hmm. so right, they right. don't have to have cars. Mm -hmm. And they take them to the, they take them to class, they take them to drink, they do everything. They ride the bus. Picture, you know, mm -hmm. What's the name of that building? Corrine Brown. Corrine Brown. <laughs> <laughs>
January 1st, 1863, their slaves would be forever free. Abraham Lincoln read the proclamation which stated in part that on the first day of January A.D. 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. And the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authority thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no act or acts to repress such persons or any of them in any efforts they may make for their actual freedom. And I for declare and make known that such persons of suitable condition will be received into the armed service of the United States to garrison forts, positions, stations, and other places, and to man vessels, all sorts, in said service. And upon this act, sincerely believed to be an act of justice warranted by the Constitution upon military necessity, I invoke the considerate judgment of mankind and the gracious favor of Almighty God. Those states in rebellion ignore the proclamation. In addition, the proclamation did not apply to slaveholding states that did not rebel against the Union. This meant that hundreds of thousands of blacks were not covered by the proclamation. A Union won civil war and constitutional amendment would formally outlaw slavery. However, during the war, the state of Texas experienced an influx of slave owners who knew that the state was not overrun by Union troops. These slave masters, along with very little Union victories in Texas, prevented news from getting to blacks. Therefore, the enslaved human beings there did not know about the Emancipation Proclamation which outlawed slavery in rebellious Texas. After the surrender of General Robert Lee on April of 1865, General Gordon Granger, along with over 2,000 troops, headed to Texas to communicate the news of victory and freedom to the enslaved blacks there. Granger arrived on June 18, 1865. The next day, standing on the balcony of Galveston's Ashton Villa, he read General Order No. 3, formally enforcing the Emancipation Proclamation. General Order No. 3 reads as follows. The people are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves and a connection heretofore existing between them become that between employer and hired labor. The freed are advised to remain at their present homes and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and that they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. With this general order enforcement, over 250,000 remaining blacks in Texas were freed. Juneteenth, the celebration of emancipation was born. The original festivals included rodeos, fishing, and baseball. Certain foods became synonymous with Juneteenth celebrations, such as barbecue, ice cream, and strawberry soda. Also, there are accounts of blacks tearing off their ragged garments and throwing them into the rivers. They then adorned themselves with clothes of their former slave masters. Today, Juneteenth is celebrated in more than 200 cities around the United States. On January 1st, 1980, Juneteenth became an official state holiday in Texas, granted full state holiday status a day when government employees have the day off. The National Juneteenth Observance Foundation and the National Juneteenth Christian Leadership Council are circulating a petition for Barack Obama, a supporter of Juneteenth, while the U.S. Senator to issue a presidential proclamation establishing 19th of June as National Juneteenth Independence Day in America. Everyone in this country should celebrate the commemoration of this country ridding itself of slavery. And there you have it, Juneteenth. Make sure you find out what's going on around town and around the country on Juneteenth for those celebrations. 
Also, we have some clips from Corrine Brown. Y'all make sure y'all keep her in your prayers and donate support. Go to the courthouse. Also, got Street Stars coming out, a crime reduction theory. It's going to be all over. I want you to support that very important film. June 16th will be the release date for Street Stars. All right, got to get out of here. This is OPO. I will see you next time on Impact. Impact. Impact.